This video deals with outliers, identifying and treating unusual observations that all too often seem to appear in our data sets. In looking around the internet for a good definition of an outlier, I found one from the book called Statistics as Principal Argument by Robert Abelson. He defined outliers as observations obtained under seemingly normal circumstances, but that turn out to be extremely deviant from the main body of observations. Unfortunately, outliers can have a big impact on those statistics that we typically compute, means and standard deviations. So we really do need to identify and treat outliers if, if they're present in our data. On the other hand, outliers often have a lot of important information about the process from which we obtain the data. Sometimes they're more interesting actually than the observations that fall in the main body. To illustrate the identification and treatment of outliers, I've loaded back up my file on body temperatures. This file has a column called temperature in which we've recorded the body temperature of 130 subjects. To determine whether or not there are outliers present in that column, we can go to the top menu to describe numeric data and pick the outlier identification procedure. This procedure begins with a data input dialog box where I can select the column of interest, in this case temperature, and put it in the data field. We'll then see a dialog box with several options for this outlier identification procedure. A good rule in stack graphics if you're not sure what options to pick, just go ahead and press the OK key. OK button as I'll do in this case. The tables and graphs which will come up by default will be first off an analysis summary which is a useful um, table to see and on the graphic side both an outlier plot and a box and whisker plot. I think I'll add one more table summary statistics and then press OK. What you'll see now is an analysis window with two text panes on the left-hand side and two graphics panes on the right-hand side. A good place to start is at the bottom right with the box and whisker plot. The box and whisker plot was invented by John Tukey and gives us a good summary of any column of data. You may recall the way it's structured. There's a box in the middle covering the center half of the data. There's a vertical line at the median, that's the halfway point, with a little plus sign indicating the location of the sample mean. The whiskers extend from the box out to the largest and smallest observations that are not classified as unusually far away, or as John Tukey called them, outside the main body of the data. In this case, we actually have three outside points two at the low side, one at the high side. Outside points are points at least one and a half times the width of the box, either above the box or below the box. Now actually John Tukey defined two types of outside points. Outside points, more than one and a half box widths away from the box, and far outside points, which were more than three box widths away from the box. Now, outside points are fairly common. You very frequently find, even if there are not outliers in your data set, an occasional outside point. It's a good screening mechanism, though, showing you what points are worth following up on to be sure, in fact, that they are valid data points. On the other hand, if you saw a far outside point, which would be indicated by a square with a red plus sign on it, the odds are very good that that point is a true outlier, at least if the rest of the data are reasonably symmetric, which in fact they appear to be here, which you can tell by the fact that, well, first off, the median is near the center of the box. Secondly, the mean and the median are close together. And thirdly, the whiskers are about the same shape. As long as the data are symmetric, one can pretty much rely on the general rule that if you see an outside point, it's worth investigating. A far outside point almost surely is different than the rest of the data. 
We can actually do a formal statistical test if we think we see an outlier in our data set by computing something called the extreme studentized deviate. The way you calculate the extreme studentized deviate is you take each of your observations, your x sub i's, subtract the sample mean from each of the observations, and divide that deviation by the standard deviation s. The maximum absolute value of these standardized deviates, it would be called the extreme studentized deviate. As you'll see, Stat Graphics can do a statistical test, Grubbs test, to determine whether the extreme studentized deviate represents a real outlier. You can see the studentized deviates by clicking on the plot in the upper right corner. This is called an outlier plot and takes each of the 130 temperature measurements and plots it together with lines representing different multiples of the standard deviation. For example, if you look at the data here, you'll see a center line, center blue line, at the sample mean. You'll then see other horizontal lines at one standard deviation on the other side of the mean two standard deviations around the mean, three standard deviations, and four standard deviations. Generally, any observations three or more standard deviations away from the sample mean are likely to be unusual. Now, I can identify which observations are beyond three standard deviations by simply taking my mouse and holding down the uh, left mouse button. You'll see up on the toolbar where it says row that that particular observation, which looks to be almost three and a half standard deviations away from the mean, is subject uh, 15, row number 15. Now, what do we do if we see an observation more than three standard deviations out? Well, what I can do is I can double click to put that graph away and then go to the upper left corner and double click to look at the numerical output. If I scroll down, I will see a table with the most unusual values in the data set. Actually, it will show me the five smallest observations and the five largest observations. The column called studentized values without deletion are those studentized deviates. The one shown in red which corresponds to row 15, is that extreme studentized deviant. And in fact, that observation turns out to be 3.479 standard deviations away from the sample mean. Now, Mr. Grubbs has invented a test by which we can determine whether that's an unusually large observation given the fact that we have a sample of 130 measurements. And in fact, you'll see a section on the output called Grubbs Test, where it gives you both a test statistic and a p-value. The rule here is that if the p-value is less than 0.05, then that extreme studentized deviate, that observation farthest away from the sample mean, is unusual at the 5% significance level. In other words, it's unlikely, there's less than a 5% chance, that we would see an observation that far away from the sample mean. So in fact, uh, observation number 15 does appear, at least at the 95% level, to be an unusual observation. Now, how do we treat that observation? What do we do with it? Well, there's a couple things we can do. In Stack Graphics, if you want to remove a data value, you can actually go back to the graph. Go back to the graph, click on the unusual data value, in this case row 15. Then go up to the analysis toolbar and look for the plus and minus button. If you push the plus and minus button once, that observation will be taken out and everything recalculated. So in fact, in this case, I took out that observation. You can see a change in the title of the graph. The sample mean is now 98.2 and standard deviation 0 
Now, would I want to take out an outlier? Well, typically I would if I could find an assignable cause. For example, maybe it turns out that this particular subject was ill when their temperature was being recorded. If I can verify that that was the case, then I would definitely feel justified in removing it from the data set. On the other hand, if you can't find an assignable cause, the conservative thing to do is leave that observation in the data set. In fact, I'm going to put it back by clicking on it again, pressing the plus and minus button, and now you'll see the sample mean and standard deviation go back to what they were. Okay, suppose we can't find an assignable cause, but we really do think that there may be an outlier in this data set. In that case, what we can do is we can actually return to the upper left corner, and instead of using the ordinary sample mean and sample standard deviation, use some alternative statistics that are designed to be less sensitive to the presence of outliers. One of the best measures of the mean, a good statistic that's not nearly as sensitive to outliers as the ordinary sample mean, x bar, is the trimmed mean. And you will see here it says trimmed mean 98.27. Well, how do you compute a trimmed mean? Well, what you do is you take your data set and you actually remove the largest so many observations and the smallest so many observations and then take the mean of what remains. If you use the default value that Stat Graphics provides for trimming, it's actually done 15% trimming at either end, removing a total of 30% of the observations and calculating the sample mean of the remaining 70%. Turns out in this case it doesn't make much difference Right, the ordinary sample mean was 98.25, the trimmed mean is 98.27, so in fact it really doesn't make much difference at all. As far as the standard deviation is concerned, you can see the ordinary standard deviation here, 0 0.733, and a number of other more resistant estimates. The one I happen to like is the one called SBI. It's an estimate of the standard deviation, and the BI stands for by weight. What this statistic does is actually takes the observations and gives more weight to the observations that are close to the sample mean and less weight to the observations that are far apart. This basically has the effect of downplaying the impact of any potential outliers. It turns out that this particular method for computing the standard deviation is really quite good even if they aren't, there aren't any outliers present. It's something like 87% as efficient as a normal standard deviation, even if there aren't any outliers. On the other hand, if there are outliers present, then it can be much, much better of an estimator than the ordinary standard deviation. So if you think there could be outliers present, then using SBI is a good alternative to using the normal sample standard deviation. You can see again, not a lot of impact in this data set, a slightly smaller estimate using SBI than just S, but again, not a heck of a lot of difference.